Hi. In this set of lectures, we're going to talk about maybe the most famous game in game theory called the Prisoner's Dilemma. And the Prisoner's Dilemma is a very simple model of a two by two interaction in which each person has the possibility of being cooperative or defecting. Now, the way you write that game is as follows. There's two players, player one and player two, and each has two options. They can either cooperate, which we represent by C, or they can defect, which we represent by D. Now, if they both cooperate, they both get payoffs of four. And if they both defect, they get payoffs of two. So collectively, they're better off if they cooperate, and they're worse off if they defect. But what we'll see as we analyze this game, that there's always going to be incentives for both players to defect. So collectively, they're better off if they cooperate. Individually, they're better off if they defect. And that creates a tension. Now, the prisoner's dilemma is interesting because it can get applied in lots of settings. So what we have is a very simple model that gives us insight into a range of different real-world phenomena. These include the following. They include arms races. It includes price competition among firms. It includes decisions about whether to adopt a new technology or not. It assumes the situations in political campaigns whether you go negative, whether you stay positive. By going negative, I mean by attacking your opponent. It includes things like food sharing. Do I cooperate by sharing food with someone else, or do I just defect by hoarding it all to myself? And then finally, it even includes things like hedonic treadmills, where I buy something just to keep up with my neighbor. In all these situations, what we get is that collectively we would be better off if we cooperate, but individually we have these incentives to deviate. That creates the dilemma. Now, after we study the prisoner's dilemma, we're going to talk about how do you overcome it? How do you get cooperation? And we're going to talk about cooperation when I say time seven. We're going to talk about seven ways in which you can get cooperation in the prisoner's dilemma. Five of these are going to come from the natural world. They're going to be ways that different species and even parts of our own bodies learn to cooperate with one another. Two of them are going to be human-induced. They're going to be ways that we've figured out, that human society's figured out, to gain cooperation, to get cooperation in the prisoner's dilemma. After we study the prisoner's dilemma, we're going to look at something called collective action problems. Now, you think of these as sort of an extension of the prisoner's dilemma. Instead of just involving two people, it's in a game that involves a whole bunch of people. And in a collective action problem, you've got to decide how much do you contribute to something. Now, there's always going to be incentive to free ride, and we're going to see that some of the same tensions we saw in the prisoner's dilemma hold in collective action problems. After we study collective action problems, we're going to look at something called common pool resource problems. These are sort of like the inverse of collective action problems in the sense that here there's a resource like trees or water, something like that, maybe even lobster, and you've got to decide how many of those do you pull out. Now, the more you pull out, the more you're defecting. We'd all be better off if people pulled out fewer lobster or you know, cut down fewer trees, but individually you can't help yourself from doing it. So common pool resource problems are another form of these collective dilemmas that we can see. Now we can think, how do we solve those? Well, it turns out for solving these, there's what we call no panacea. So this is a picture of Eleanor Ostrom, who's a Nobel Prize winner in economics, even though she's a political scientist. And she spent her life figuring out how do people around the world solve these collective action problems, and how do they solve these common pool resource problems? We'll talk a little bit about some of the stuff that she's figured out. OK, so that's an outline for what we're going to do. We're going to start off by talking about the prisoner's dilemma. We'll talk about ways in which people have figured out how to get cooperation in the prisoner's dilemma. And then we'll extend that to think about collective action problems, common pool resource problems. And we'll talk a little bit about how you can solve those as well. OK, thank you.